guys thanks for watching um, yesterday I noticed that on my Garmin that it didn't find my cadence sensor so that means probably the battery is dead and I need to replace it anyway um, well uh, it lasted about a year right now um, it attaches it attaches with these rubber bands around your pedal cranks you just hold it against your pedal crank and then wrap this around and snap it uh, to these uh, plastic uh, lips and then it will it will stay put um, in the beginning I thought it was uh, these rubber bands were too too short but you need to stretch it a bit they are pretty sturdy um, and after a year they stretch uh, kind of permanently a little bit longer so you won't have any trouble to reattach them again and it will stay put pretty good so well let's see how we should replace the battery I believe it's it's a little yeah I need to rotate this plate just a little bit like so and then I probably can lift it up yes and then there is a little flat battery I don't know which type it is yet but I will try to remove it it's a CR2032 battery and I suspected it and I already got a fresh one right, re right here so let's unpack it yeah like this This is the positive side, so I need to put it like this, I suppose. Put it back in. And then I do need to have a look at how I need to put this back in again. I don't know if you are able to see it, but this protruding uh, lip was this point at the bottom next to my thumb so I guess that's where it yeah that's where it snaps in I I felt a little click and now I need to push it and rotate it like this now it's back again okay now I can go and reinstall it on my bicycle again so let's go in my garage and do that we're next to my bike it's on its side and I'm going to remove all those screws over here to um, to let you to show you how to attach this sensor I can do it without removing this cover but then I'm not able to show it to you uh, like I want to so please give me a moment now I've removed it I can reattach the sensor to over here all right <laughs> if I'm correctly you can now see everything I'm seeing too um, well this cadence sensor just needs to be on one of your pedal cranks it just moves around like this and then you make sure you move the rubber band around like this and then you are ready to go it's a lot easier if you do this 
<laughs> uh, the second time than you do it the first time because this cadence sensor, uh, th these rubber bands will stretch over time. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's see if I can get it working on my uh, GPS. And then we are ready. So it's currently loading. Mm -hmm. Let's swipe down and find my sensors. And I can see over here, CAD, that means cadence sensor is found, which means that I've uh, correctly um, placed the battery. Um, yeah, I can also see my speed sensor and my speed sensor is at the rear axle and I will uh, probably show you how to do a battery replacement for that too. Um, please keep in mind that when you order a Quattro Velo, it doesn't come with any sensors except uh, the the, uh, the speedometer and um, um, that's located on the dashboard inside. Uh, yeah, so I've bought this Garmin GPS uh, just after I bought this bicycle and it came with a cadence and speed sensor and I do believe that other brands also sell these uh, kind of sensors and I do believe that these sensors can be used interchangeably uh, on other devices too because it talks via a protocol that's called ANT plus and all ANT plus compatible devices should be able to talk to each other if I'm correctly. All right people while I was remounting this uh, button plate back again, I realized that I make a mistake in explaining it. I've put the sensor on the wrong side because if I did leave it like that, the um, heels of my foot would knock the sensor probably off the uh, crank. So I've moved it to the other side and uh, now, uh, now should be good. Um, there's one more thing. If you're uh, wondering what a cadence sensor does, it does count the revolutions per minute that your crank makes. And for me, the ideal uh, amount of revolutions per minute is around 80 to 100 revolutions per minute, because that uh, helps you to accelerate fast enough without getting tired and without pushing too hard on the pedals because if you are um, because your if your revolutions per minute are too slow then you're using your muscles uh, really a lot and they will um, how do you say that they will uh, start to hurt earlier if you know what I mean so there is an ideal um, revolutions per minute uh, for you as a person uh, and that's something you need to figure out and it, you can do that with a uh, cadence sensor. Some people do find lower uh, revolutions per minute nicer than higher resolutions per minute and in generally I would say if you drive if you just drive on the flats on the straights you will be all right with around 80 revolutions per minute um, if you're going uphill, for example, you need a lot of power to get up the hill. So therefore you need to uh, have uh, a higher revolution per minute to get up the mountain without getting, without using your muscles too much and getting tired too much, you know? Um, therefore I would recommend to have higher uh, revolutions per minute when driving uphill, especially with a velo mobile, because with a bicycle you push like this down, you know. With a velo mobile you push like this forward. So a velo mobile uphill, uh, driving a velo mobile uphill is a little bit harder than just a regular upright bicycle. So 
yeah, that's all I've got to tell you uh, for uh, right now. So uh, see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.